In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint Tyranid skin, their carapace, as well as their weapons. Welcome to Tabletop Ready. My name's Michael, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some Termagaunts, his High Fleet Leviathan. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial will be linked in the description, as well as being shown on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel. And it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who've made this tutorial possible. As well, I want to say a massive thank you to Muppet Among Men, Ian Humphrey, Offer Barrach, and Matty, who have recently become supporters to the channel. Thank you very much. I've always enjoyed painting Tyranids because they're the only faction to be completely organic, so we can have a lot of fun with some washes and glazes to get them painted. Because you tend to have a lot of termagants to paint, I fully assembled them and undercoated them using Wraithbone spray making their pale skin easier to paint. And through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your termagants painted. And to make it easier to follow along with, I'll split the tutorial up into different chapters. In the first section of this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the steps and show you how we can paint the skin. Before we get started, it's going to be a good idea to use some wraith bone from the pot to paint a base colour on our Tyranid skin. We're doing this because there may be areas that our spray undercoat wasn't able to get to and we need to make sure we start with a solid base colour to work from. As well the spray undercoats aren't always a match for the colours in the pots with the same name and so doing this means we get the actual colour we're after. Whenever we're painting it's always a good idea to thin our paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first giving us more control over how much paint is deposited. And when painting this base colour, you want to make sure you keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted, preventing unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And because we thinned our paint, it's not going to give us that solid colour straight away. Don't worry though, because once our first layer is dried, we can repeat the process and paint another layer. Painting in multiple thin layers like this lets us build up to a solid colour without losing any details. Applying paint to our miniatures is often overlooked, but when we take our time and learn to do this in a more intentional way, you'll instantly notice a difference. Now we've got our base colour sorted, we want to bring out all those contours and details in the skin, helping it to look less flat using a thin wash. But before we do the wash, let's use some Emperor's Children and paint all those areas between the body sections and these ridge details in the arms and legs. Remember, you can always go back and neaten things up whenever you need to. We want to do this now because all these areas will also benefit once that wash is dried. So to make the wash, we want to thin down one part for Lupus Pink Contrast with eight parts Lamy Medium. Using Lamy Medium means we can make our Lupus Pink Contrast more transparent while still having it cover more evenly as water tends to break up the contrast causing it to cover unevenly. When you're ready, we want to apply this all over the termagant skin and you want to use enough so it covers comfortably. And although we want it to settle more into the recessed areas, try not to let it pull too much. And if you see this happening, you can just use your brush to soak up any excess wash we don't want. Now we want to work on lightening those raised areas of the skin using the Wraith Bone Glaze. To create a glaze using our Wraith Bone, we just want to thin it down with two parts water as we only need to make it more transparent. And you want to paint this in even thin layers, which is going to help us create smooth transitions. Again, making the skin look more natural. Glazing is often seen as a very skilled technique used by more experienced miniature painters, but it's not that different from painting normally. It just takes a bit more practice and getting used to. In fact, I find it quite a fun technique to do. Like our base color, we can apply this glaze in multiple layers to strengthen that color making it lighter as you get to the most raised areas of the skin. Take your time with this step as rushing it 
we can completely ruin the hard work we've already put in covering up all those interesting colours and tones that have been created. Once you're happy with how everything looks, it's time to really make some of those details and edges stand out using the highlight. I do want to go into some detail about highlighting as we're going to be doing quite a bit of it throughout this tutorial. So for this first section, I'm only going to be talking about your standard line highlight. But later on in the tutorial, when it comes to highlighting the carapace, we'll be going into more detail about the different highlights we can do. Whenever I'm highlighting, I like to keep a brush separate so I know I have a brush that's up for the task when I need it. As well, I don't tend to thin down the paint as much as I normally would as we want a nice strong colour without having to apply it multiple times. And I like to remove some of the paint from the brush which gives us more control on how much paint is deposited preventing those thick blobby lines. The colour we're using is white scar and when you highlight in, the idea is to paint thin lines along edges and details you want to be more pronounced and noticeable, helping to define the shape of an area. This is where having something to hold on to really helps so we can move and rotate our miniature around making painting thin lines so much easier as we can paint in a downwards motion with our brush. I'm not doing a lot of highlights at this stage as you don't tend to get many hard edges on squishy fleshy areas so I'm really just picking out the obvious edges and details. Highlighting does take a bit of time and effort but it really does improve the look of our miniatures once we're done. It also teaches us better brush control and hand-eye coordination making us better painters overall. And now you know how to highlight, let's finish our termagant's body using full grim pink to highlight those pink fleshy areas and joints. With the skin finished, we can now move on to painting the carapace. I now want to go through the steps of painting the carapace and show you the different stages of highlights we can do on our miniatures. Apart from the fleshy areas, the next most prominent feature of any Tyranid is their carapace, so let's see how we can go about painting it. When painting the carapace we want to make sure we get solid base colour first, and for our termagants, who are from High Fleet Leviathan, we can use Barracknar Burgundy. Remember this may take a few thin layers to get that solid colour. Once you have your solid base colour, we can use some Abaddon Black in the recessed areas between the plates to separate them out. Now we can look at the different stages of highlighting that we can do to really make the carapace a feature on our termagants. The first stage of highlighting we can do is called a chunky highlight and for this we want to use Screamer Pink. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line and we want to paint it along all those edges as well as the raised details. Something else we need to make sure to do is to pick out some of those raised ridges and bumps you can see in the carapace. We don't want to overdo these lines because if it feels too busy it won't be as noticeable from a distance. Next up is an edge highlight using Cacophony Purple and this is very similar to the line highlight we did for the skin. This is painted within that chunky highlight and along all the edges and to make this a little easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For places we can't do this we can take our time painting thin lines where we want that highlight. Again we can continue to work on that carapace texture, painting these lines within the chunky lines we've already painted. Varying the length of them adds extra interest. With the edge highlight done, we can move on to a finer highlight using De Chala Lilac. This highlight is used to pick out the more prominent edges we want to stand out. Although I'm showing you the many different stages of highlights, it doesn't mean you have to do the same. I just want to show you what's possible and you should always only do what you feel comfortable doing and you can always come back later to add extra highlights when you feel more confident. Now we know some of the different stages of highlighting we can actually follow the same steps to paint the black carapace that the termagants have as well as any hooves and claws. Our base colour for these areas is going to be a bad and black to start with making sure not to get it on any areas we've already painted. And because we don't need to worry about darkening any recessed areas, we can go straight to highlighting. Starting with Dark Reaper, we're using this to paint those chunky highlights. For the edge highlight, let's use some Thunderhawk Blue to pick out all those edges. Then Femrisian Grey can be used for the fine highlight. And something we didn't do for the main carapace is the spot highlight. 
This involves painting small dots of blue horror on corners and points. This will help define the shapes and details even more. So following the same steps we use to paint our carapace, you'll have no problem painting other high fleet carapaces as well. It's just deciding what colours to use. Now we have the skin and carapace both finished, there's actually not a lot left to do. So let's work on finishing the rest of the details next. In this final section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to get their fleshy weapons painted and any other last details as well. I know it seems like there's a lot of work going into painting these termagants, especially when there's so many to paint, but I've done my best to make painting them as straightforward as I can while still achieving something we can be really proud of once we're done. Something that's going to help with painting a lot of these termagants is batch painting. So rather than painting each termagant individually, and then moving on to the next one, we complete each step across all termagants before moving on to the next step. This also helps us achieve a more consistent look to the unit. To keep your sanity, it's usually best to work with groups of 5 or 10. Let's get our termagants guns painted now, starting with flayed one flesh. And we want to make sure we don't cover up these details in the gun that are actually the termagants fingers. Now we're going to use Acadian flesh glaze to start creating a gradient that will gradually get darker towards the end of the barrel and what I would call the ammo feed. To continue this gradient we now want to use a Bugman's glow glaze. Remember we want to start further down the barrel and ammo feed to achieve the gradient. The Bugman's glow glaze can also be used on these tubes. We can finish darkening the end of the barrel and ammo feed using a Galvorback red glaze on the ends of these areas. And because we're using a thin glaze this can be used in some of those recessed areas to help bring out some of the details. We're using glazes not only to create smoother transitions, but also because we don't want to lose any details with so many layers being used. Finish the gun using Wraith Bone to highlight. One of the last details on our termagants left to paint are those teeth, which we can simply paint using new Shabti Bone, and then Wraith Bone to highlight. Let's finish our termagants painting the eyes, and this includes the one on the gun with Uriel Yellow. And finally, let's paint a line of Abad and Black on the gun's eye, just to add a little creepiness. Whilst painting these termagants, I've really enjoyed the challenge of painting them in a way that can be used to paint a large amount of miniatures, but still achieve a standard we can be proud of. So let's see how they turned out. Our termagants from High Fleet Leviathan are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. There's plenty of other tutorials on the channel, so make sure to go check those out as well. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content, and I'll see you in the next video.